Welcome to our show. My guest today is uh, Danielle Ford, who is, this is interesting, I mean, you have founded a Young Moms Club. Yes. And uh, we'll talk about what that means in a minute. And a little bit later on in the show, um, Renald Alexander, a magician, is going to entertain us. He's over at the Clarion Hotel. Young Moms Club. Uh, obviously, you had an experience yourself, and you saw a need to do this. Absolutely. Right? Um, I got pregnant at 17 with my boyfriend since I was 15 years old. And, and you were in high school at the time. Yeah. yeah. And then pretty much I ended up dropping out, attending beauty school, getting married at 18 because that's you know how you should fix everything when you get pregnant, uh, proceeding to have another child by the time I was 20. And by the time I was 22, I was divorced and on my own with $6 in my bank account. Well, you know, you know the expression about children having children. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you look back, you're how old now? 28. 20, so when you look back when you were 17 years old, uh, obviously you weren't I equipped do not to know. be a mother. No, I have no idea. My youngest sister just graduated high school two days ago. And I look at her and I'm like, she couldn't have a child. I have four younger sisters all together. And I can't imagine any of them having a baby at that age. Okay, so at 17 you have a child, and you don't really have the experience and maturity that, uh, that a typical mother older would have. Right. So how do you go about and obtain those skills? I guess that's what your, your, your website is all about. Yeah, right? that's exactly what Young Moms Club is about. Um, I have done a lot of work on my own. Just being, I guess, even at that age at 17, I was really motivated, so I kind of went out and did my own study. Um, on life skills and communication and financial planning and just when, when you get thrown into it you kind of figure it out but looking back if there was a resource that I could have just gone to and just learned those skills and found out what I was going to be missing while I was busy taking care of a child and not taking care of myself that would have been much more helpful than going out at, at, on my own and spending wasted years you know trying to figure it out now, when you're 17 and in high school and get pregnant, it's uh, it's a little bit you're like the embarrassing. Black sheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so you felt that you had to leave high school. Yeah, I dropped out of high school. Um, you know, I wanted to go. I wanted to be an esthetician anyway, so I knew that I could go to beauty school, and I ended mm -hmm. up doing that and getting my esthetician license, doing that for a few years. But basically, the whole concept behind Young Moms Club is the judgment part. As soon as a girl gets pregnant young. It just, as, as soon as you say it to adults, you're 17, you're pregnant, it just feels like the whole world just comes together to tell you that, oh, you just ruined your life, you suck, you know? And that Young Moms Club is about, okay, you got pregnant, whatever, what do you wanna do? You know, do you wanna finish high school? Do you wanna go to college? Do you wanna start a career? Here's the life skills you need to be able to go after whatever dreams you have. Now, do we have a big problem in Nevada with teenage pregnancy? Nevada has the highest rate of teenage pregnancy in the nation, and we're one of the only few states that doesn't offer any type of on-site child care. So we do have a lot of online high schools, but we don't really have any options for young moms unless they want to finish uh, school pregnant and then have their, their parents raising their kids. So there are some uh, states that offer um, daycare at high schools? Yeah, a lot of them. I, I would think there'd be a lot of, um, I mean, you know, the budget, the school budget is so, mm -hmm. you know, difficult now. I think that this would be a hard thing to, to yeah. make happen in Nevada. Absolutely. I would love to see that happen in Nevada for sure, but I also do understand that we don't have the, the funds for it right now. Uh, and do you think that if they would create that, that that, according to some people, would encourage mm -hmm. teenagers getting pregnant? I don't think so. You know, we have all these these things that we say are going to encourage teenagers getting pregnant and things that are going to deter them, but it's still happening. You know, nothing that we are doing is stopping it. So why don't we at least give them a chance, you know, by allowing them to live with their mistakes and still be able to, to thrive. And help the children grow up to be have normal, um, you know, be normal good citizens as, they, as they get older. What type of things do you have on your website? We have um, all different types of features. One of the things I do is a weekly video called Figure It Out Friday, where I talk about different categories from self-care to communication to job training, financial, things, legal advice. Um, 
We also feature um, how she did it, which are moms who made it past the teenage years, and we kind of feature their stories. We uh, spot spotlight young moms all the time. I also, um, my boyfriend is an attorney, and he lives in Montana, but he has, um, he did family law for 12 years, so he will come on and um, I call it borrow my lawyer boyfriend, and he'll offer free family law advice to all the girls on my website. What do you think is the most important thing that a 17-year-old that has a child needs to learn? The most important thing is that the 17-year-old needs to learn is that she can still do anything she wants to, even though she has the burden of a child. There are ways to get anything you want, and she shouldn't let that that obstacle stop her in her goals. Now, you had a support team. I mean, you're family um, lives in Las Vegas, um, the, the uh, father of your children is, um, helps and is still present in their lives, right? Um, the father of my children is not present okay. anymore. Um, that's a whole long story, but he's kind of just Okay, but when you were 17, well. he was... He was he there, was there yeah. yeah. He joined the military mm -hmm. right away. He didn't have really anything going on, so he joined the military, and I was a military wife for a year. Okay, so when you're 17, you do not have your parents, and you don't have family or, you know, or the father around to help. Um, I mean, as a young woman, I, I know I have teenage daughters. I mean, they're totally ill-equipped to, to have children. They're still children themselves. <laughs> yeah, so where would you start? You, I look back at it now, and I'm like, I have no idea how I even did it. You just take kind of one step at a time. I am grateful I had my family. They weren't very supportive at first, but they came through a little bit. Um, but a girl who doesn't have any type of support, they end up homeless. They end up in you know safe houses for moms and, and children, and that's sad. You know we don't have enough things going on here um, in Nevada to help all of the girls that are becoming pregnant young. So they you know end up just a, a product of the system on welfare unable to to get a head start and not really knowing what to do next. I, I, would th I think that the important thing is to um, get a job or have some something going on in your life so you can support your child at, at that age. But that's difficult to do if you don't have support around you and because you have to, there's nobody to take care of your child. Yeah, I personally, I was making good money as an esthetician. And I still, you know, I would make money to pay all my bills and, you know, make ends meet, but then I couldn't afford daycare. So I applied for daycare assistance. I got turned down because I made too much money. And they were pretty much told me, either get a job that you make less money and you can qualify for daycare. But, you know, I didn't. I ended up bartending and cocktail waitressing and working three jobs, you know, for a couple years. But, yeah, I can definitely see a lot of young moms having to to quit their jobs, not have a job, live in state-funded housing, you know, get daycare, and it's just this vicious cycle. And once you're in it, it's hard to get out of. And how about little things like um, paying bills, balancing checkbooks? I mean, uh, how do you buy insurance for your car? I mean, my, 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 you know, a 17-year-old doesn't know some of these things. And you, right. how do you, you can even get insurance at, at 17? You, at 17, I don't know. You know, I was 18 when I had my, my first. I was barely 18. Um, those are the kind of things that we talk about is uh, financial literacy and those are a lot of most girls make those mistakes in their late teens early 20s and then they learn from them and then they go have children and they l start budgeting for their right, children. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. the, the typical uh, experience that somebody has as before childbirth. Right. So a lot of young moms get into debt. You know, they have a baby in the credit card and now they have to, you know, put everything on their credit card and they're just in that hole. So that's one of the things that um, that we definitely try to teach is how to avoid getting into debt, how to get yourself out of debt, how to budget, what's really important, what's a need versus a want, and those kind of things. You know, oftentimes you hear that when uh, you have teenage pregnancies, that it's the grandparents that, that are raising the child or the child is you know, put up for adoption or, mm -hmm. or some other relative taking care of the child. Uh, you're trying to avoid that, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great if they have the support of a family. You know, if there is a relative that wants to help out, even better. You know, it takes a village sometimes to raise a child. But um, if they don't have that, then they need to do it on their own, and they need to be able, they need to be equipped with the life skills to be able to do that. So do you, you have videos on, um, on your website and instructional mm -hmm. videos and, and little tips and things, things to do with your kids, your children, exactly. and things like that. What is the most common type of 
um, concern that, uh, that the teenage girls would have? Uh, most of the girls who write me, there's not just one concern. It's always this whole mess. It's like, my boyfriend is going to leave me. You know, I, I don't think I can do it without him. I don't have any money. My car is breaking down. I don't have a job where I'm going to get fired. It's a whole mess. It's never just one little thing. And then, you know, that's hard to solve a huge problem like that. So it really just comes down to the basics of like, breathe, you know, focus, worry about yourself, put yourself first, prioritize what's most important. There are options and just going back to the basics instead of looking at it as this big, big mess, just fix one little thing at a time. Right. One, one day at a time, one, yeah. one, one step at a time. The, uh, and, and what about the, the men? I mean, typically the, uh, the father is not in the picture, right? And That's usually how it happens. Or, or, the, or, or the, as you indicated, they're, um, the mother is afraid to leave the mm. father because she doesn't want to feel alone and there's an abusive relationship going on or some anger or hostility going on with, toward the child. Absolutely. I hope that somebody creates a young dad's club <laughs> because that's very needed as well. Um, that's not my expertise, but that one, the most thing, the biggest thing is the financial burden. You know, if they're there with a the man taking care of them, if they don't have family and their boyfriend is supporting her and her child, it's hard to just leave not knowing what you're going to do. Then comes the abuse, you know, young, it's usually younger kids. And if it's not a younger kid, then it's an older guy, which is a whole nother element, you know, of dysfunction. Right. And then with that, the young age comes, you know, adultery and cheating and drama and fighting in front of the children and all sorts of problems. So a lot of, some young moms end up getting married and end up, you know, married for a long time and that's great, but mostly it's usually a dysfunctional relationship. And then what happens with a young woman who has a, a baby, she's 18, and, and now she starts dating? Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> that's a whole other uh, issue. I, you know, I tell them, don't be dating until you can take care of yourself. However... Or how do you know when, that, when, when it's time for that? I mean, do you, do you think a child has to be a certain age? Or? I don't think there's a certain age or a certain age for the mom or anything. It's just as soon as she has enough self-confidence that she's not going to go look for a man just to fill a need, you know, and then end up repeating the cycle of just de depending on someone. As soon as she feels like she's her own woman and on her feet and able to take care of her child, then, then she can be open to accepting somebody else into her life, in her child's life. So since Nevada has the highest rate of teenage pregnancy in the country, what would, are some of the suggestions that you would make to, to help the situation? Uh, one of the things, and this is just for the entire country, you know, we have like 10 times higher pregnancy rates than any other country in the nation, is to start teaching other forms of um, abstinence, besides abstinence, teaching, se actually teaching sex education. Uh -huh. They don't teach it. Um, they teach a lot of abstinence, they touch base a little bit on protection, but they don't, you know, give anybody tools. You know, in America, there's a really good documentary about this, but in America, if a girl carries a condom, she's seen as a slut. Right. And in, you know, other countries, if you don't have a condom, you're seen like that. It's just normal for a girl to carry that. So just, you know, re-education about protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would love to see, you know, the on-site child care, but that's, that's, again, not preventative, but it is more of a solution to keep girls in school and to give them an out. So people can reach you at your website, youngmomsclub.com. Com. Yes. Right, and you also have uh, some videos on YouTube that uh -huh. you, go, you go on YouTube and you just um, search Young Moms Club. Is that how? Yeah, it's youtube.com you? slash Young Moms Club, and we have a weekly video series. I'm, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Pinterest. We have a lot of interaction on social media and a lot of fun contests going on and um, d talking about different discussions and all sorts of stuff going on there. All right, so for uh, young ladies that are looking for some, some answers, some support, they mm -hmm. can contact Danielle Ford mm -hmm. at, at those, um, at, well, no, online, online. Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere, <laughs> yeah. anywhere. Okay, hey, now we're going to have some magic Yay. with Renald <laughs> Alexander. He's going to perform, I hope, some tricks. Yeah, awesome. We'll be right back. <laughs>